In this lesson, we're going to be talking about absolute value inequalities. Please remember that the absolute value of a number measures its distance from zero on a number line. And we're going to be relating the last topic that we just studied, which was compound inequalities. We're going to be relating that to this new concept of absolute value inequalities. And here's the first way we're gonna do that. Remember this, the words and and or from the last uh, section that we studied. Those are going to apply in this section now. The word and is going to be represented by these two symbols, less than or equal to and less than. And the way that I remember that is when you actually say the symbol, you say less than or equal to or less than. And that will be your kind of indication that we're using the, um, an, uh, an and compound inequality. And the word or is going to be using these two symbols. So you're probably thinking great or or equal to or great or, right? That means or. All right. So looking at these four examples on the bottom, you can kind of like sink your teeth into, you know, where these graphs are coming from in reference to these inequalities. Looking at this first one, I have the absolute value of X is less than or equal to seven. Okay, so think to yourself, what could be represented as, as x? And you're probably thinking, well, 7 and negative 7, right? Because that's the absolute value of x. So we would be representing that on our number line, all the numbers that are between x, I'm sorry, negative 7 and 7. All right, same thing for uh, the absolute value of x is greater than 4, great or, right, or we could represent what's in that, uh, those absolute value bars by either a negative four or a four, giving us that or graph that you see here. And then of course we have no solution possible answers, which are, um, these are our two special cases at the bottom. And you gotta kinda think about it. Notice that my number on the right hand side is negative. If it's a negative, then you have to really think about what can I actually put in for x here? and in this case, there's no answer because there's no number that's going to be positive, right? Because an absolute value yields a positive number that is going to be less than or equal to negative three. It's just not gonna happen, which gives you an answer of no solution. And likewise, all real numbers. Notice how the number on the right is a negative. If that case occurs, you have to think, well, what could I substitute in for X to make this true? Well, every single number would work because every number that's positive will always be bigger than a negative, yielding you that special case of all real numbers. Now that was just a general little overview, but we're gonna go ahead and actually look at all these examples in some problems. So let's look at this, uh, these first two. Okay, now I'm telling you in the beginning that both of these are and inequalities. Okay, these are both and, and of course then we'll look at or later on. So here's my first and inequality. So in the back of my head, I'm thinking, I know what this is gonna look like on a graph. I know that I'm looking for the intersection of numbers, right? So um, notice here that uh, we have the absolute value of 5b is less than 40. Do you remember the cloud from the last section where we have to eliminate everything that's on the outside of the absolute value bars in order to solve this inequality? Well, at this point, we're actually already at the cloud. I'm just going to go ahead and put a little cloud about it. So that means that we can break this into case one and case two. These should look very similar to what we learned about it with equations. So my first case is going to be 5b is less than 40. I'm going to go ahead and solve that by dividing both sides by 5. So b is less than 8. Okay. That's my first inequality. Let's go ahead and grab the second. So I have 5b, and with the absolute value inequalities, this is where something changes. Instead of just making negative 40, um, or changing 40 to negative 40, which we are gonna do, I'm also going to flip over my symbol. You see what I did there? I changed the symbol, and I changed the number. Now, simplify. I'm gonna divide both sides by five, and I have b is greater than negative eight. Okay, so those are my two inequalities. And this is where the whole compound inequality idea comes from, because these are two inequalities, um, and it's an and inequality, right? This is less than. So 
let's go ahead and graph it just like we would an AND compound inequality. I'm going to start by putting a zero here. I'm going to put a negative eight and a positive eight. I have B is less than eight and B is greater than negative eight. So it looks like my inequality is going to look just like this. Remember, I'm looking for the intersection of those two lines. If you need to review that concept of why these two graphs intersect each other, I would like you to encourage you to go back to look at the compound inequalities lesson. And that'll help you understand uh, why I graphed that the way that I did. Set notation and interval notation are exactly the same as how we did it in compound inequalities. So my set notation will be B such that negative eight is less than B, which is less than eight. And my interval notation will be parentheses, negative eight comma eight parentheses. So you can see from the very beginning, I knew this was an and inequality and I have an and graph that goes along with it. Let's take a look at another and. Now, right now, take a look here. Look at my symbol. That looks like a great or, right? Great or and equal to. Well, remember, I have to get to the cloud first. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative six. Uh-oh. This is an inequality, and I'm dividing by a negative six. That means I have to flip my sign. I have to. So my negative sixes go away, and I'm left with the absolute value of a minus 10. All right, is less than or equal to positive seven. You got yourself to the cloud. Now, now that you're at the cloud, look at your symbol. And you can see that your symbol is less than. This is an and compound inequality. So let's go figure out the two inequalities. My case one, a minus 10 is less than or equal to seven. So I'm gonna go ahead and add 10 to both sides. A is less than 17, and that's one of my inequalities. My second inequality, remember this is where something changes. A minus 10, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and flip my sign back over, and then I'm gonna make my seven negative. There are two parts to this one. Now go ahead and solve. There's a lot of detail in this. A is greater than or equal to positive three. Okay, now I've got my two inequalities, or my compound inequality. And remember that these are and, so think about what these are going to look like. So let's go ahead and draw our and graph. Actually, since I don't have any negatives, I'm gonna actually go ahead and move my zero down here. I'm gonna have three on there, and I'm gonna have 17 on there. A is less than 17, and A is greater than or equal to three. So less than 17, greater than or equal to three, going to look something like that. Set notation will be a such that three is less than or equal to a, which is less than 17. So that represents all of the numbers that are between three and 17, and they also include three. My interval notation will be bracket three comma 17 parenthesis. And there you have it. So we had to do a little bit more work for this one, but we applied what we learned last unit to this new topic in this unit. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at some or inequalities. Okay, so I kind of tell you ahead of time that these are both or. I won't always do that. So let's go ahead and look at this first one. So look at the symbol, okay? You see that it is an or, but we really can't decide if this is an and or an or until we get to the cloud. So let's get to the cloud first. I'm gonna get to the cloud by multiplying both sides by positive eight. That gets rid of the eight and I'm left with the absolute value of negative seven V is greater than or equal to positive eight. That's your cloud. Okay. Now we can determine by looking at our symbol here, great or, this is an or. So let's go ahead and break it into case one and case two. 
case one will be negative seven V is greater than or equal to eight. I'm gonna divide both sides by negative seven. Okay, and I'm left with, well, careful here, I've gotta flip that sign, right? Be really careful. V is less than or equal to negative eight over seven. And I'm just gonna leave it like that as an improper fraction. Okay, all right, let's go do case two now. I've got negative seven V. I'm gonna flip my sign over and I'm gonna flip my number around and I'm going to divide by negative seven. I'm gonna flip my sign. You see how many details are in here? V is greater than or equal to positive eight over seven. Lots of detail here. Feel free to stop the video and rewind and check that out again. Okay, since this is an or inequality, I should have two graphs going in opposite directions. Let's see if I do. So I've got zero, I've got negative eight sevenths, and I've got positive eight sevenths. V is less than or equal to my negative one here, there it is. And then I've got V is greater than or equal to eight sevenths. So there you have it, you have an or compound inequality. So let's go ahead, set notation, V such that. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the one on the left. So I've got V is less than or equal to negative eight over seven, or V is greater than or equal to eight sevenths. Just like that. Interval notation, remember this is a tricky one. Negative infinity goes all the way up to negative eight sevenths with a bracket or bracket eight sevenths comma infinity. Little complex there, but don't let the fractions scare you. Again, the fractions are just numbers, that's all. All right, let's look at one more here. Notice how my symbol in the beginning is an and, but I'm telling you this is an or because we're not at the cloud yet. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by that negative nine. Right, because we want to eliminate it from the, from the outside of the absolute value bars. By doing that, I have to flip my sign, don't I? Because I divided by a negative. So I'm left with the absolute value of n plus two is greater than or equal to positive eight. Now you're at the cloud. Now look at your symbol, great tor, right? So we know what this is going to look like. This is a compound or inequality. Case one will be n plus two is greater than or equal to eight. Remember, I just rewrite it without the absolute value bars. I'll go ahead and simplify this down. n is greater than or equal to six. So there's one of my inequalities. Let's go capture the other. This one is where things actually happen. So we have n plus two. I'm gonna flip my sign over and I'm gonna flip my eight over to negative eight. I changed two things there. And we could go ahead and simplify this down. N is less than or equal to negative 10. All righty. Let's think about this. We want an or, don't we? We want an or. So I've got zero, I've got six, and I've got negative 10. Let's see if we have an or inequality here. N is greater than or equal to six, which is going this way, and then n is less than or equal to negative 10, which is going this way, and we in fact do have our nice or inequality, and let's go ahead and put it in scientific notation. n such that, we've got n is less than or equal to negative 10, or n is greater than or equal to six, and then our interval notation, negative infinity comma negative 10 bracket or bracket six comma positive infinity. And there we have it. So I showed you two and and two or, and you're probably thinking, well, I know what's coming next, special case situations, all right? So here are your two special cases for absolute value inequalities. Treat them exactly the same way. Do nothing different than what you've been doing all along. I'm first going to get to the cloud. 
So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to divide both sides here by negative 10. That's going to get me to the cloud. That's what I want to get to. By doing that, I divided by a negative. I have to flip that sign. Do that so you don't forget it. Absolute value of x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Now, let's think about this one. The absolute value of x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Now, notice that this is an or, okay? And just think about this. I have the absolute value of just a number by itself, just an x. Do you see how no matter what I put into that absolute value, it's going to give me a positive number? And all positive numbers are going to be greater than or equal to negative 4. They're always going to be. So right now, we can actually tell if this is going to be um, a special case. And another big indicator to us is this. Let me show you. Notice how the right-hand side is a negative number. If it's a negative number, you know you have a special case. We just need to figure out which one. And in this case, it's going to be all real numbers. So let's go ahead and write that down. All real numbers. Every single number that I put into those absolute value bars will yield me a positive number, which is always bigger than a negative. To represent that on my line, I'm just going to put a little zero here to give me a little reference of where I am. And then I'm going to have two arrows going in opposite directions. Set notation will look like it always does, x such that, x exists in the real number system. Interval notation will be parentheses, negative infinity, comma, infinity. All right, so I bet you can guess what this last one's going to be. Let's take a look. Let's get to the cloud first. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. That leaves me with the absolute value of b is less than negative 20. All right, so I got myself to the cloud here. And notice, um, notice that my right-hand side is negative. That indicates to me, hey, I've got a special case going on here. But which special case is it? Okay, so let's think about it. Think about the number that you could substitute in for b. And it's going to always be less than a negative. Is that even possible? Think about it. Any number that you put into the absolute value bars is going to become positive. You cannot have a positive that is less than a negative. It is impossible, leaving us with no solution to this problem. It is impossible. So once you get to this point, you really just got to kind of think about it. Okay, you got to think, can I have a positive number that is less than a negative? No, you can't, leaving us with that no solution. No solution yields no graph. You can't put it in set notation and you can't put it in interval notation because there's nothing to put in those notations. All right. All right. That brings us to the end of our lesson on absolute value inequalities.